having me. Yes, hi, my name is Frederick, um, and I'm, I'm currently working as a consultant for um, FAO. I'm, I've been working with the UN for five and a half years in various capacities um, in the UN Secretariat in New York. I, most recently, I worked for UN Water as their interagency water advisor. Previously, I worked at the um, United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs in the um, Secretariat. I've worked with the um, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN mm. and um, the German Development Corporation as well as the International Water Management Institute. And yes, I've worked. Um, I've worked basically from the local level, working with farmers um, in Bolivia on um, risk mitigation strategies, mainly um, climate-related risk mitigation strategies, um, up to the global level um, in the United Nations General Assembly. And um, with all of these things, um, water has been a cross-cutting theme, and um, I found it especially interesting as um, I often felt that. When you talk about sustainable development, it often stays at a very general level. But then, especially in water issues, I've, I've found that a lot of the things that we talk in very general terms really um, come to the core and come to the hit the ground. Let's well, let me start like this. I think um, water managers have always adapted to a variable climate. If, um, if we put it that way. and um, But what we've seen over the last year, or especially over the last decade, that extreme events have um, have occurred more frequently. And I think that's where one can say that climate change is manifesting itself right now, and that we, and that we need to catch up with a lot of work that should have been done a long time before. You, you speaking mostly about the developing world. Are you speaking about the developed world? Uh, you know, uh, is there wh where are the places that you're you're thinking of in your mind? Well, I think that the most emerging, the most um, the, let's say immediate. Um, work needs to focus on developing countries. There we have a large share of the population dependent on agriculture, and quite clearly um, the impact of climate change with changing rainfall patterns and um, more intense droughts and um, more, more intense floods will then have an impact on these communities which are least able to adapt, least able to uh, make technological advances. One response if I'm a farmer, or maybe I'm in a water ministry, or an environment ministry, or I'm a corporation, is to say, well, uh, the the scientists don't know what's going to happen, so I, I'm I'm going to keep doing what I uh, uh, I have been doing. Um, no, exactly, and that's exactly what we're seeing is happening right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll take that sort of as an excuse and say, or. Even so, say, well, you know, there might be some, or take even climate change as an excuse and say, well, you know, now we have this, you know, we, we have an added drought and we cannot deal with it. But that's where it exactly it goes back to, um, well, let's implement the things that we do know. Um, let's look at the principles, for example, of integrated water resources management, which a lot of people have advocated for quite some time, that we look at what are the different uses, how can we optimize different uses, how can we increase um, the efficiency of um, water management um, throughout from the different uses and really, um, and really enter into a dialogue and see, so how can we use the water that we do have right now as most efficient, efficiently. I've been working on a, um, on a project with the um, Ethiopian government some time ago, um, looking at um, basically um, how can we better monitor water resources, how can we get a better idea of what are our water resources, which then can serve as a basis for exactly that, those planning purposes. And looking ahead, um, looking ahead, um, thinking that the basis to it is knowing what are our water resources right now, um, what are our groundwater resources, um, what is the rainfall pattern right now, and then taking that as a basis to think about, okay, let's let's let let's start doing what um, what what could be beneficial to farmers right now, and then think about the additional variability that might come in um, in the years to come. Was that a hard sell to the Ethiopian government? No, the, the Ethiopian government was very enthusiastic about. Um, that particular project, because I mean, a lot of things when we, um, when we think about the droughts in the past in Ethiopia and how devastating they have been, and um, the quite simple measures that um, could be taken in order to mitigate the impact of droughts.
but you were part of a of a of a real cross cutting enterprise um, to, to try and and think about about water across uh, a wide uh, uh, swath of the United Nations. Mm-hmm. Well, what UN Water is trying to do is really um, look at water as all its facets, and um, as in a country, um, water is spread and water is relevant to a number of ministries. The same is true in the United Nations. Um, if you look at the um, UNICEF, that huge um, water and water-related work related to access to drinking water supply and sanitation. Similarly, if we look at the World Health Organization, looking at water quality and um, very much concerned with sanitation and how that relates to public health. Then if we look at the Environment Program, UNEP, um, where water and ecosystems is, is, is a strong theme. The uh, it's a little bit like um, integrated water resources management uh, at the institutional level, looking at institutional flows. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly, and, and, and really putting the, the issue and the, let's say, the challenge in the center and then trying to see, okay, how can we solve that? How can we bring the, the expertise, the tools that we have um, within the different um, institutions together to, to tackle this challenge most effectively? It's Based on your experience, does that, that kind of cognitive transition occur uh, in, in most people fairly readily, or does it take... A, uh, a, a crisis. Mm-hmm. I think I think these crisis moments they 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 bring attention to the um, to the issue. It all of a sudden comes up um, to the news. It's moving beyond this crisis, which often results in a very strong crisis response of being more proactive and trying to think ahead of what could be done in order to avoid such a such a um, such a crisis where you will then eventually lose the headlines on this issue which would be which would be the, the to me the greatest success um, indicator that we that we don't hear about these things anymore because <laughs>